These are airway adjuncts. So we have the oropharyngeal airway, also known as an OPA. These go into the patient's mouth this way to hold the tongue from falling in the back of the throat. These will be used on patients who are unresponsive with no gag reflex. The other type of airway adjunct we have are NPAs, or nasopharyngeal airways. These go into the nose and down the back of the throat to keep the airway open through the nostril. These are used on patients who are semi-conscious, um, and the only contraindication for using an NPA is someone with a massive facial trauma or a severe head injury. So, um, to insert an OPA, that's going to be one of your stations that you will use, you will do. So I'm just going to walk you through the National Registry station the way it should be done. So like any other station, it's going to start with PPE. Then the examiner is going to ask you to insert an OPA. The first step of inserting an OPA is to measure it. An OPA is measured from the corner of the mouth to the earlobe. So we can start with our largest OPA, measuring from the corner of the mouth to the earlobe. You can see this one is much too large. It goes way beyond the ear. On the other hand, we have these tiny OPAs we could use for infants. And obviously, that's going to be entirely too small. So the two OPAs that are closest to fitting this mannequin would be this one, which goes just a little bit past the ear. And this one seems to fit just right. So you measure it from the corner of the mouth to the earlobe, and this one's about right. When we get ready to insert this, we have a couple choices. The biggest concern is to not push the tongue posteriorly back into the throat, because the goal is for this to hold the tongue forward. So if we push the tongue back with the OPA, that's defeating the purpose. One thing you can do is use a tongue depressor to hold the tongue forward while you insert the OPA. My preferred method is to put the OPA in sideways at a 90 degree angle and rotate it as we go in. So to open the airway, we're going to use what's called the cross finger technique. I'm using my fingers kind of like a pair of scissors with my finger on the top teeth and my thumb on the bottom teeth to hold the mouth open this way. Using my left hand, I'll put my finger on the top teeth, thumb on the bottom teeth in the same way, just hold the mouth open. This way if the patient bites down, my hand will be moved out of the way. So I'm going to use this cross finger technique going in sideways with the OPA. And as I insert it, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so that when it gets into the mouth, it's placed straight in. So I know it was hard to see from uh, inside the mannequin, but the way the OPA in, went in was like so. So as you're going in, you're starting sideways. As you go in, you rotate it 90 degrees so that it's facing the correct position. You're kind of twisting it like a corkscrew as you go in. Okay, at this point, the examiner is going to um, notify you that your patient is gagging and to remove the OPA. When you pull the OPA out, you're going to pull it quickly straight out of the mouth. Uh, there's no concern about the tongue now, so we can pull it straight out of the mouth. If the patient was vomiting, we would also uh, log roll the patient to let the vomit clear from the mouth while they're actively vomiting, and use a finger sweep to, to wipe out any vomit that, that remains. Now we're ready to suction the airway. So you want to take your suction unit and first test it by suctioning on your hand. If you're wearing gloves, you'll see it pick up a little piece of your glove. Even on my bare hand, I can see a small circle that it leaves showing me that it's suctioning. This one's broken. It would actually have this, this canister attached um, to collect anything that we suction. Okay, to suction the airway, I'm going to use that cross finger technique to open the mouth. I'm going to go in no further than I can see going in first, and then I'm going to suction on the way out. This is an adult patient, so I'll suction for no more than 15 seconds. Once I've finished suctioning, the examiner is now going to inform the candidate to insert an NPA, or a nasopharyngeal airway. Similar to the OPA, our first step is to measure the NPAs. Now this is going to be measured a little differently because it's going in the nose. So instead of measuring from the corner of the mouth to the ear, and nasopharyngeal airway is measured from the nose to the earlobe. So as you can see, this NPA is entirely too large. And in fact, most of these are. The smallest one that I have is actually the closest fit for the mannequin. And this is the smallest one I have. It may be just a smidge too long, but it's the smallest one I have. Before you would insert that, you would either apply lubrication or um, verbalize that you're applying lubrication. It goes into the nostril, upside down, and as you insert it, you rotate it in so that it stays in the nostril like so. And that would be the end of that station. Okay?